club growth director, Rupa Data. Rupa joined Toastmasters in 2016 as a member of Trojan Speakers. When we asked her what her unusual hobby was, she said that she felt this was a relative question and that she spent most of last year pairing Indian food with sparkling wine. And that's turned into a regular column in a wine publication, fantastic. Her shared memory is witnessing the power of pause in a speech that she's delivered that she's heard delivered in many formats from a 15 second table topic to a full table topic to a full speech and pauses are so powerful. Please put your hands together and welcome Rupa Data. Thank you very much, Russell, and good afternoon, Division A and all of our guests. Um, wow, I've got to go after Lucinda. Don't know if I'm going to match that, but I'll do my very best. So Antonia has asked me to uh, speak on a couple of different subjects today uh, in the context of marketing largely. But for me, both the topic of our Rotary Alliance and Speechcraft are about how Toastmasters has lots of different facets. So the first 20 minutes or so will be on our Rotary Alliance, bringing you guys up to speed on that and how we'd like you to approach it as a district. Um, and then we'll have a short break and I'll move into Speechcraft specifically. So I'd, I'd like to think everybody that's here with us today knows that we went into a formal strategic alliance with Rotary International a couple of years ago and it's still rolling out. Today I'm just going to cover the alliance itself, learning more about Rotary as an organisation and how we can get involved and, and Rotarians can get involved with us. I'd like to spend about 30 seconds reflecting on the concept of an alliance. Now, I am seeing across the world, and I think Antonio's pointed this out to me as well, that um, by default, a lot of Toastmasters have, have gone, oh, hang on a minute, uh, we've gone into this partnership with this organisation called Rotary, it automatically means more members. But the concept of an alliance is that you've got two organisations, sometimes more, that have got a lot of similarities that can come together and connect, but they also remain very independent. And, and to, to really frame it, we need to go back to why we exist as an organization. So Toastmasters is not about public speaking, but it's an organization that helps people find their voice, become better communicators and better leaders so that we can go out into the world and better serve. Rota uh, Rotary International is an organization whose tagline is service above self. So it's very much about service and, and the connection really comes from us further servicing uh, the world and Rotarians having an opportunity to develop further their communication and leadership skills. The professional and growth opportunities that come as a result of this alliance Venn diagram does it for us. So if we think about Toastmasters and how we can benefit, we've got the opportunity to connect with a phenomenal network. Rotarians have roughly 1 million members, maybe more. We can take advantage of using our speaking opportunities and learning opportunities outside in another organization and through Rotary, make a difference in our, in, in our own communities. Rotarians, on the other hand, have got the opportunity to utilize a curriculum that's been developed for us, for, for them by Toastmasters. Um, and again, more networking opportunities. So those are just some examples. So what is Rotary? An organization that through volunteering goes out and really helps the world. And these are just some examples. Rotary uh, members from all walks of life. Their club network. So Rotary clubs tend to be historically the older generation. Rotaract clubs are 18 to 30 year olds and Interact clubs are 12 to 18 year olds. So the equivalent of Toastmasters gavel clubs. The organizational structure is very similar as well. So if you look at the, the different roles or titles, the, the fundamental difference really is that Rotary is probably five times the size of Toastmasters, if you, you think in terms of membership and, and, and scope and reach. So off the top of my head, 
um, District 91 compared with Rotary Districts. There's five Rotary Districts that overlap District 91 as a geographical area. Again, worldwide presence, very similar to us, just a further reach. So how do we get involved? Going back to my point about not thinking that Rotarians are automatically going to become members of Toastmasters. We have developed a short course or program for them, which essentially is eight different modules. It's been promoted within the Rotary community. So we would recognize it as certain Toastmasters Pathways projects. They're not all Toastmasters Pathways projects. Some of them have been developed specifically for Rotarians um, and they can access it through their learning center. But some, some Rotarians won't even know about it. It very much depends on the club, whether or not it's being publicized. Examples of the projects that are available. Again, some of them we would recognize, some of them not so much. So how do we get involved? Ask, in the same way we've got the toastmasters.org website, we've got Rotary International website, um, the links to which can be found quite easily. Find your local club, reach out and I'd say take a mindset of curiosity, see if you can attend a meeting. Similarly, if, you're, if your club's got an open house or even for your own regular meeting, reach out and invite them to a meeting. Ask if they know about the, the Rotary Alliance. A lot of Rotary clubs, in fact, I think most of them have a speaker segment. So you could ask to be a speaker at, at their meeting and vice versa. Uh, my first interaction with a Ro Rotary club was about 18 months ago, uh, where past district director Pedro Casillas and I went to uh, Hounslow Rotary on an invitation from them because they'd heard about the Alliance as well. And we did a bit of a table topic session, but also did a presentation similar to this. Cross training opportunities. So if you start from a, a place of curiosity and we take that relationship forward, whether it be going to their club, inviting them to ours, you'll start to see where there is an overlap. And that comes through social or networking events. Again, I'm going to use the open house as an example. Um, the lady that invited myself and Pedro originally, she found out about the Alliance at their equivalent of a district conference. So they have conferences as well. We could invite them and vice versa. Um, when I was running the Division B conference last year, I invited members of that club to, to that event. Sadly, uh, they, they had a, a different event on that day as well, which they happened to invite us to. Dual membership. So one of the reasons why the Alliance formed in the first place is that, you know, I think both organisations actually realised that lots of members were members of both organisations. And this is something that can happen organically, but please remember that they have their own program. We need to help them promote it they can come and do an evaluation at our club and show you, you guys can show them how to do an evaluation. Again, the speaker opportunities are phenomenal. Most clubs have a speaking slot. If they feel that a topic that you guys might have uh, is useful for, for their members or their club, it's probably worth asking if you could have a speaking slot. Similarly, they have a lot of high profile speakers on their books. So think about inviting them to your division conference, our district conference, uh, even as a guest on, um, speaker when it comes to having a mystery speaker. And finally, participating in service projects. This is the biggest thing that they can offer us. Uh, so I'm now on the mailing list for Hounslow Rotary and I get stuff through pretty much every week. Um, you know, the most recent one is whether or not they're, they're looking for people uh, to be a, a marshal for a pharmacy locally um, because of, of the COVID rollout and so on and so forth. There's loads of projects that we can get involved in and there's lots that uh, they can do for us as well. So that's the summary. This is a link to the toastmasters.org website with the, the Rotary page specifically, which um, is updated fairly regularly. Uh, this presentation was on there. There's lots of content on there. Um, I'm happy to take personal questions off the back of it. If um, anyone's got 
any specific questions that they need to ask. But most of what we need is, is out there already. So I don't know how much time we've got for questions, but I've got, a, I think, seven minutes before we, we need to move on. I'm happy to take any questions at all. Um, I, yes, could I ask a I question? Have a question. Hi, um, my question is, if I go and visit a Rotary Club, do I get club ambassador points for my visit the way I get if I go to a, a Toastmaster Club? Uh, not as far as we're concerned as a district, but it's something that we can look at. Thank you. What, what, what made us choose as an alliance Rotary Club as opposed to other organizations like the Lions or the Kiwanis? I don't think uh, that that's off the card. Um, and that's certainly not a, a decision that's very much not at my level, but I can certainly see the, the similarities personally, but, and I can also see this, the same with Lions and Kiwanis as well, if I'm being honest, Simon. Could be the start um, of many. I refer back to the first question you were asked. Um, I thought the lady was gonna ask a question about counting a speech as part of your pathway. In previous rules, I remember on the old legacy system, if you did a speech at another meeting or another venue, provided you had someone from your club as an evaluator, that would count towards your speech levels. Is that oh, correct? That still stands. Thank it still you. stands very much so. In fact, I'd encourage it. Hmm. Hi, Rupert. Could we, I have a question. If I invite members from the Rotary to our meeting, would they be inviting us to be volunteers in their club or how does it work? Uh, great question, Alexandra. So uh, in the same way, some Toastmasters have, have perhaps gone taken that approach. Uh, I'd imagine they would as well, but you don't have to. Okay. Okay. Rupert, could you say something about your experience of going to the, you've been to the um, Rotary Club and say how this would sort of um, complement being a member of Toastmasters um, from the individual's point of view, from your own point of view, because a lot of people are going to more meetings these days on, in lockdown and they're just going to more Toastmasters clubs. Yeah, but what absolutely. would be the advantage of, say, going to a Rotary club? Um, is, it, is it slightly different focus on, on a typical meeting, which you think is more enriching in some way, or there's some advantage to it from, from the individual's point of view? Or is it, is it that you're, they're more focused towards helping society? Yeah, great, great uh, question, Philip. And, and I'd answer it simply by saying, actually, just go. Um, from my perspective, what I think perhaps Toastmasters can learn are, <laughs> I, I am being generalistic here, I think Rotarians can teach us how to do business meetings better. Um, so they have a very similar structure to Toastmasters in that they have a set agenda but they are very focused on uh, the business meeting side of things. Um, so typically it will be, well, this, is, this is the projects we've done so far. When they were meeting in person, a lot of rot rotary meetings are, are focused around a meal. Um, so that's something that we don't tend to be able to open them, uh, offer them unless we start breakfast and dining clubs. Um, and then they tend to have a, a speaker segment uh, and that, in the club I went to was about 40 minutes or well, that's what they gave us so I think it's just being curious like you would be if you were going to a different Toastmasters meeting or a different organization whatsoever and, and seeing if, it, if there's value from, for you and, and the same applies the other way around. Okay I've got a question please. Um, number one I've got three parts really quickly Number one, is there any indication as to whether this has worked from Toastmasters' point of view in, in that have we got new members? I realise it's obviously very beneficial uh, what we're offering Rotary. Uh, hopefully over time that will be appreciated. Uh, so that, that's really my first part. Secondly, I thought with Rotary you had to be invited to join. So I didn't think you could actually get in touch and say, can I come to one of your meetings? I thought it was more like, even like if we say a secret society or, um, I don't know, um, uh, what's that uh, one where you, you'll have a special handshake? I can't You're remember. You're thinking of the Masons. Yeah, the Masons. And, and my third point is really for everybody or management listening. I started this morning at 100% on my iPad. 
I realized it's using a lot more than I expected. So I turned it off for the lunch half hour, although I had it on for the break, as I was instructed earlier to leave it on. I'm now down to, I think it's 13%. And I'm going to have to leave before the end of the meeting. But it's, it's using up a lot more power than I expected. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to make that point, And I don't know if management realized you can, when you, you can, and a half hours or whatever the total length is. Gavin, you can continue joining the meeting while your iPad is on charge. Yeah, it's just awkward from my point of view here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gavin, I'll, I'll try and read. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. I think there were three questions. So um, if I miss one, uh, please say. So the first question is um, Do we know if we've increased our membership? The short answer is I don't know. Um, we can try and find that out. Equally, I go back to my point at the beginning. It's, yeah, it's very much about mutual benefit. It's not about us increasing membership through Rotary uh, or having Rotarians join us. We may actually increase our membership through Rotary because people, they will tell other people about Toastmasters. Um, with respect to, you're going to have to remind me about the second question. I didn't ca quite catch that. Anyone? Uh, I, I think we've hit the 15 minute time limit, uh, Rupa, if you wanted to that's go. That's fine. To the... Yeah, yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. I'm happy to come back, back on, on those questions. But uh, just to close, it is about mutual benefit. It's not about us having Rotarians in the same way we wouldn't necessarily want to be sold to um, and Rotarians coming to us and saying you must join. Uh, so Gavin, just to close, no, it's not a secret society. In the same way, there are some closed Toastmasters clubs. There may be some Rotary clubs that turn around and say, uh, no, you have to, you, you can't join. But essentially, that no, it's very open. And I'm going to take a two minute break here just to get my mindset into the different topic. Um, but I hope that was useful and happy to take further questions.